But are, are there any out there? Mm -hmm. Are there any meetings out there yet? That actually looks good. So here we go. We're going live. All right. Good evening. I'll call tonight's meeting for August 10th, 2022 to order. Uh, Mr. Metz, will you call the roll, please? Sam Cornwall. Here. Roger Daniel. Here. Greg Emmerich. Jeremy Lakinas. Here. Paul Nini. Here. Todd Moore. Here. John Langhorn. Here. You have quorum. All right. Thank you. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on our agenda is meeting minutes from June 8th. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to review the minutes. I know in the uh, previous email there were some changes. Um, any other revisions that we need to be aware of before we call for a motion? Okay. Looks good. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept. Second? I'll second. All right. Mr. Metz, when you're ready. John Langhorn? Yes. Todd Moore? Yes. Paul Nini? Yes. Jamie Lucanis? Yes. Roger Daniel? Yes. Sam Cornwall? Yes. All right, thank you. This next item is our conditional use hearing tonight. This is a request for conditional use approval by the applicant and owner Kim Vu to remit automotive sales and leasing at 1821 South University Boulevard. The property is located in the B3 zoning district where automotive sales and leasing are considered a conditional use that requires review and approval by the city's planning commission. Um, any questions before we get started? I'll turn things over to Mr. Metz. Actually, do we need to swear you in prior to? Yes. We do. Okay. Just for the testimony you're about to give to the board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. So tonight we have a request for a conditional use application from applicant Kim Vu, also referred to as Kim Rich on some of the applicant, um, applications as you may see. Um, this is to permit automotive sales and leasing in the B3 zoning district, which by uh, the permitted uses table requires conditional use approval, which is through the planning commission. As you can see on site, this is her um, property owner right here and uh, there are several car lots surrounding her property the property was previously used as an office office auction sales and a mechanic shop the subject property is zoned b3 per the Milltown development code the purpose of the b3 general business district is to provide intense commercial and office development in close proximity to the interstate and high volume streets that can provide needed goods and services to residents of the city, region, and beyond. Automotive, automotive sales and leasing, this is for any building or lane use used for the display, sale, or rental of new or used motor vehicles in operable condition. This type is intended for the sale and lease of typical passenger vehicles. <clears throat> Parking space requirement, this is for new construction only. This isn't for a remediation of a property, which is what she'd be doing, but I wanted to provide this information to you. Um, just for reference, would be one space for 100 square feet of indoor floor area. Um, the Middletown Master Plan 21, 2021 Comprehensive Plan um, designates the future land use of this area as industrial. So it in, intends it for, to be a, a more intense type of use in the future. Street Master Plan, South University Boulevard is a major arterial road that satisfies the Street Master Plan requirement for automotive sales and leasing. So by the Street Master Plan, she would be allowed to have automotive sales and leasing here. Um, public notice requirement, public notice 
um, was published a minimum of 10 days to the public prior to the Planning Commission and um, to all neighbors. There were no other department comments. Review criteria for conditional use approval. The proposed conditional use is established as an allowed conditional use in the applicable zoning district. The proposed use is consistent with the spirit, purpose, and intent of the master plan and the general purpose of this code. The proposed use complies with any use-specific standards as may be established for the use. Any building structure uh, constructed, reconstructed, or altered as part of the conditional use in a residential district shall, to the maximum extent feasible, maintain the exterior appearance of residential buildings of the type otherwise permitted and shall have suitable landscaping, screening, and fencing were deemed necessary by the Planning Commission. The proposed use will comply with all applicable development standards except as specifically altered by the Planning Commission and the approved conditional use. The proposed use will be harmonious with the existing or intended character of the general vicinity and that such use shall not or will not change the essential character of the same area. The proposed use will not involve uses, activities, processes, materials, equipment, and the conditions of operation that will be detrimental to any person's property or the general welfare by reason of excessive production of traffic, noise, smoke, fumes, glare, or odors. The circulation on and access to the property shall be so designed as to not create an interference with traffic on surrounding public thoroughfares. The design of the buildings, structures, and site will not result in the destruction, loss, or damage of a natural, scenic, or historic feature of major importance. The proposed use will not impede the normal or orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district and whenever no specific areas, frontage, height, or setback requirements are specified in provision for specific conditional uses, then such use shall be subject to the site development standards for the applicable zoning district. Thank you. All right, we've heard the review criteria. Any other questions for Mr. Metz before we open the public hearing? I only had one question. It does mention indoor car display. Um, looks like they're specializing in maybe Hondas. Um, part of the plan, did they give any detail about how they plan to um, accommodate that part of the request? Is this just something that they will be doing to remediate that site or improve the site itself? They'll be installing a garage door to be able to pull a vehicle in. Um, past that, we have not really spoken much about the um, remediation or um, alteration of the building itself. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? So, this is for repair only, not sales, right? No, this is for the um, sale of a, a select line of um, model of Honda vehicles ranging from cars and trucks, but this is more of a um, higher end remodel of like 80s and 90s vehicles. So it's going to be kind of a very niche market and very um, low volume sales. Didn't we have, uh, wasn't there a four acre minimum requirement? That is for um, in the permitted with standards zoning district, which is B2. Okay. So if it's less than four acres in the B2 district, it would need to come before planning commission to have your authorization. So with this, it's very similar. Any other questions? All right. Now we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the proposed variance, please come forward. Seeing none, I will ask if there's anyone to speak in opposition to the proposed variance, please come forward. Again, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And in this particular case, are we asking for staff recommendation? Based on the staff, based on the staff report provided, staff recommends approval of the conditional use for 1821 South University Boulevard for automotive sales and leasing. Okay. Um, one other question before we call for a motion. Um, do you anticipate, you mentioned about the square footage for the parking lot, um, one per, I was trying to take some notes as you mentioned that, uh, Mr. Metz, but. Yep. Um, one per 100 there, square feet so of. We wouldn't need to, 
put any type of condition, additional condition in this case that solves that problem for us. Is that correct? Uh, well, um, so that's for any new construction of an automotive sales and leasing facility would have to be would have to meet that requirement. Um, it would not be required for a retrofit of a building. Okay. Any other questions? So, do we have a motion? They're going to be doing maintenance as well. I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you. They're they're going to be doing maintenance as well at this location. The applicant is here, and I believe that she would be able to better answer that. Uh, okay. Well, that's the applicant right the applicant. there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. they're, they're, it's both. Both. Um, we did close the public hearing, but recognizing that you're here, would you like to speak on behalf of the proposal? Oh, no, you can go up here to the dais. Kind of I'll swear you in. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Just raise a microphone. Uh, What's your question again? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Kim, Kim Vu, and I'm owner of the property. And your address? My address is 5857 Buckthorno, Hamilton, Ohio, 45011. You swear the testimony you're about to give the board is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be God. Yes. Thank you. So you wanted to speak, you are the applicant, you wanted to speak in favor of this proposal, and we had a couple questions. Yes, ma'am. So my question was, are there going to be maintenance done at this location? So you're going to have like... A mechanic there that's going to be working on several vehicles that you guys are going to yes. be selling is that correct so it's going to be um auto sale and yes for men for our for the car that needs service okay yeah. okay that's all I have. <clears throat> yeah. any other questions todd would i be able to say one thing yes as it currently is a mechanic shop that would be that legal non-conforming use would be able to be carried on so they would still be able to, um, by right, take take on um, repairing of any vehicles there. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now close the public hearing once again. <laughs> um, okay. So we've heard uh, from the applicant and Mr. Metz. Um, any other comments or questions before we call for a motion? Seems like a legitimate use of that building. Okay. Yep. Um, just for uh, conditional use, wanted to point us out on the uh, review criteria. Um, been trying to encourage uh, prior board. Um, we should probably adopt this practice as well. And looking at the review criteria, I just wanted to point out a couple for the record. Um, uh, in granting this use permit, uh, if you look on the second page here, um, number one, proposed conditional use is established as a use in the applicable district. I think that would fit well within there. Um, the proposed use will be harmonious with the existing or tenant character of the general vicinity. It's number six. Just trying to put some additional detail into the criteria. I know that we've been encouraged to do that in the prior board as well. So, um, so do we have a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Sam Cornwall. Roger Daniel? Yes. Jamie Lakinas? Yes. Paul Nenny? Yes. Todd Moore? Yes. John Langhorn? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Um, next, this moves us to uh, number five on our agenda. This is case number 222, consideration of text amendments to the Middletown Development Code pertaining to 1206, accessory and temporary use regulations accessory uses and structures in chapter 1204, zoning districts and use regulations, site development standards and use specific standards. So. Thank you. So tonight we have uh, two text amendments. So I'll go for the first one. It's in three, well, the first one's in two different locations, which is in chapter 1206, accessory and temporary use regulations. And additionally, chapter 1204, zoning districts and use regulations. So the Planning Commission's recommendation tonight of approval would be for the City Council for final review and decision if approved. So, staff request to change 1206.01E15 
to state that porches and decks that are enclosed are required to meet the minimum setback for the principal building. We would like to remove the requirement for covered porches and decks that are attached to the structure and decks that are more than three feet above grade to meet the required setback. They will have to meet the requirements of 1204.10 projections, projections and required yards. The Board of Zoning Appeals requested this amendment due to a large number of approved variance cases concerning this matter. Essentially meaning um, decks and patios that are not fully enclosed, that do not have a roof, that are not a structure other than just the base layer, could go into the front yard setback no more than 10 feet. This is mentioned in a, in a different location. This was requested to, um, as a text amendment by the Board of Zoning Appeals. There's a second location. So chapter 1204.10, um, site development standards. This would um, projections in required yards. Staff request to change the language to allow covered porches, patios, and arbors to project into required front yard and rear yards up to 10 feet as long as they are not enclosed. The Board of Zoning Appeals requested this number amendment once again um, to, due to a large number. So we don't want patios more than 10 feet deep? So. For example, um, I guess no. Short answer is no. As long as it, if it's attached to the house and it's taller than three feet, then it then it would not be able to extend into the rear yard setback. So, um, so for example, if you are in a R4 and you have a 30, 30 foot setback rear yard setback, and your house meets that setback as it was built. If you wanted to build an attached deck that was three feet above grade, you would not be permitted to. You'd have to go in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals to get permission to go into your, your rear yard setback. Now, a lot of your um, older homes or homes on larger lots don't run into this issue. A lot of your smaller homes on smaller lots, which Middletown has quite a bit of, have run into this issue. Um, we're dealing with, currently I'm dealing with three different cases right now with that for Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, people are determining whether or not they actually want to go through with this. Uh, but, but a requirement that you can't have a patio any deeper than 10 feet behind your house? Well, it says patio. Um, yeah. So if your house was right on the line of the setback, if it was, am I understanding it right? Correct. If you have a 30 foot setback and the house is on that line, you would not be able to put a patio on there. But if your house was 60 feet, you could run up to however big patio to the setback line. Correct. In a, a concrete slab patio, you could do because it's, it's below three feet, right? Correct. Well, so just a patio without anything built up. Patio. Some some people do like a raised patio, though. Right. right. Okay. I just I have a hard time reading it yeah. that way. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Are we trying to make sure that we keep green space? Mm. No, uh, rear yard setbacks are designed to have spacing between homes. Um, green space would be more of like your maximum area of accessory structures in your backyard. We have a 25% aggregate on that, but um, no, this, this is more or less spacing between homes, spacing between <coughs> decks and, and patios and, and livable space. Okay. So, James, the, the typical setback in our residential neighborhoods is how many feet? I mean, is there, is there a maximum to that and a minimum to that? Like, what is a typical setback? It depends on the zoning district. So R1, I believe, is 50. <coughs> okay. Um, R2, I believe, is 40. And then it... Then um, R3, I think, is 40 as well. Um, and then R4 is like 30 or 35. So 35 feet is sort of the smallest setback that you're going to see in any residential neighborhood. And this would, if someone built that maximum allowable of 10 feet, would allow for then a 25 foot setback at minimum in right. some of these smaller neighborhoods. Correct. We have several of these um, um, plain developments that are going in that are 
having they already determined that a rear yard setback for this lot that's approved uh, through planning commission um, as a 25 foot setback a lot of we're running into a lot of these new homes cannot put a deck into a house that already has a 25 foot setback rear yard setback the house is built on the 25 yard line they can't put a deck without going through bza so this would allow it to go 10 feet in so they would build a have a house or a deck that could go 10 feet in that makes sense kind of gets confusing so please ask me any questions okay so we've had approved minimum setbacks and planned developments as small as 25 feet setbacks which yes. this would only this would then allow a, essentially a 15 foot setback Correct. between houses i mean just for a raised patio a or a raised patio um now is this mostly in neighborhoods like are we talking about um so you're not subject to this you know in renaissance are we talking about uh setbacks this low or are we talking about no renaissance has quite large right. setbacks very nice um sawyer's, this is sawyer's mill this is sawyer's has 25, mill has 25 foot setbacks okay yeah rear yard which effectively eliminates their ability to build a deck and is that where a lot of these requests are coming from, a Sawyer's Mill? Okay. Yeah. Well, we had Just two, so or, we're clear we had two or three of them from Renaissance in their senior, senior living place, oh, okay. where okay. the back of the house actually hit the setback. Yep. Yeah. They couldn't even have a step attached to the house. Mm -hmm. But I, I still have a hard time reading this, that this is only dealing with setbacks on here. It was a patio, can't go more than 10 feet. It could go 10 feet into the projected rear yard setback. So if your house is built right on your rear yard setback, they would be able to go 10 feet into it. So like your deck, would, you would have a deck that could extend 10 feet into it, into your, your rear yard setback or 10 feet off of your house. But if they wanted a larger than 10 foot deck or raised patio, the they name. would have to come to BZA to apply for that outside of this allowable variance. Is that, is that where you're going? Well, okay. it may be a C or, or B before this thing. We're starting with D. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're not really talking. I mean, I don't see where the setback comes into play. I mean, if you had a house with a two acre rear yard, you wouldn't want to be limited to 10 feet of patio, right? In that case, you can build whatever size patio or deck you want, right? Because you're not you're running into the setback. Yard. I'm unfortunately having a hard time hearing everyone. I think what he's, what he's saying is why, why are people, he, I think there's some confusion as to whether this is a, you can only build 10 foot patios, because I, I'm trying to understand, Roger, how you're yard. phrasing this. If, if it's if it's not enclosed, you don't have okay, and it's not up, it's not three feet in the air. Okay, then it you don't have to meet the setback requirements. That's yeah. what it's saying. And if yep. you have a you know, lot it's, it's size that's larger than the required residential setback in that particular so neighborhood, then you don't have to worry about how big your deck is either. Amendment that we're talking about. Right. So so that yeah. yeah, they're just okay. Well. I think additionally what may help you if you look on to the right hand side it says D projections in the required yards. Required yards are often referred to as like a setback is often referred to as a required yard, something that couldn't be in this, which is maybe why you were thinking like preserved green space. Yep. So it's it's a portion of your yard that you typically can't build your house into or a required yard. Okay. So basically in Sawyer's Mill or in the patio home section of renaissance right out of the gate they can't build a stoop uh, and anything off the correct we're, we're seeing um i have an applicant i've been working with on that in particular um and they can build a deck or a patio less than three feet and not attached to the home off into their middle of their yard which is called a, like a floating deck mm -hmm. but then they have to build stairs down to it walk out and then climb back up to it and when you, and we have had applicants that have said, you know what, I don't want to deal with um, BZA, I'll just do that instead. But the applicant I'm working with right now has mobility issues. His wife has mobility issues, so they can't even have a, they can't have a deck at this point in time from their house to it. 
they would have to um, go down the stairs, and that's something that's not possible for them. Fair enough. Okay. Um, did you want to address 1204-09, uh, or do you think it would be best since these two, do you want us to call for motion separately on each one of these items, probably since we're making those code changes? We have three different sections here we're talking about, so. We have two different sections regarding the um, required yard or setbacks as, as opposed to um, attached decks mm -hmm. over three feet of grade. And that would be a little bit more up to you whether you'd want to vote on them individually or if you'd want to vote on them together as one. As long as we're in agreement with all the changes, I, can, I, I say we just incorporate everything into one motion. I mean, why complicate it? Yeah. 1206 and 120410. Yeah, you could structure it in a motion. Before we do that, uh, do you want to address 1204 with massage therapists before we go any further? You want to, or should we close this, for it close this part out? Before I think it might be better to close this one out. Okay. Keep uh, everybody on the same train. Okay. Um, sounds like we're ready for a motion. So we would like, Paul, you want to structure that motion with both items together? Sure, I move we uh, accept the changes that are suggested and, and for approval. 12.06.01 and 12.04.10, yes. Sure. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Some, some. John Langhorn? Yes. Todd Moore? Yes. Paul Nenny? Yes. Jeremy Lakinis? Yes. Roger Daniel? Yes. Sam Cornwall? Yes. Thank you. And that brings us to 120409, the, uh, the service establishment. Says. <coughs> so. <clears throat> so this is one that um, staff discussed today, earlier today, and um, we don't necessarily need a vote today because we've kind of tweak the idea of how we may want to present it, but we are wanting to get your understanding of how you would like it to be put into the development code or how you'd like it to be structured to, to vote on later. So staff request to change 1204.09D16B to state that massage therapist must apply for and receive a license issued by the chief of police for chapter 832 of the codified ordinances. Staff requested this amendment to ensure that all such establishments are in compliance with the requirement of both the development code and codified ordinance. So the process now is for massage therapist to already go and receive a license issued by the chief of police to operate in our city. It just was not listed in the development code. So to ensure that it is enlist, um, listed in the development code, and when we do have a massage therapist come in, as soon as they come to get their zoning approval, the zoning administrator <laughs> would be able to see that, recognize it, and point it out. This is also to bring um, the development code up to date with the codified ordinance um, per Chapter 832. So now, why wouldn't we vote on that? Well, um, Sorry, did I cut no, you? no, no, no. It's, no, it's a good point. It's a good question. So earlier today, we were debating about um, how should this best be put into the development code? Should it be added to 1204.09D16B, which would just be changing this line? Massage therapist must carry a valid license from the state of Ohio and receive a license issued by the chief of police per chapter 832 of the codified ordinance. That's what it would say if you were to vote on it tonight and move forward. Um, there's also talk about would we change the permitted uses table. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the permitted uses table, but it's a big um, checkerboard that states the variety of different um, zoning districts and then the uses. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like um, bingo in the sense of, okay, in the B2, can we, can we do a massage therapist? Well, it's permitted or it's permitted with standards. Um, currently, 
we talked about changing massage therapist, taking it out of personal service establishments, removing it completely out of the personal service establishment and making it its own row. Now, since I didn't have enough time to change the slide for the proposal tonight, and I didn't have enough time to do that in the staff report that I sent you guys, we were just going to ask you what you prefer. Would you prefer it to be um, where it is right now, 1204.09D16B, or would you want it to be pulled out of personal service establishment and um, placed in its own category? Now this might seem a little, um, can't think of the right word, but it's kind of hard to like contextualize and think about what I'm trying to say, I'm sure, because. What's, what's the better, I assume there's a legal twist to this since it's part of the codified ordinances for the police. I assume we're, we're, this is for a specific reason. Well, it, the development code needs to have this included in there just to bring them both to be congruent. Um, it's just where's the best place to put it. So this isn't any kind of a new regulation. We're just no. putting a regulation in here to agree with other codified ordinances in other places. It's just... Yeah, it's just bringing the development just, code up to standard, yeah. We're, yeah. Not, we're not changing anything or adding anything. It, we're just I don't see any making it not to vote on it tonight. Yeah. But are you, are you saying that you're not clear where you want to place it? And, and that's the thing is when staff um, was talking this evening as I was preparing for this meeting, we debated about where we should put it. Would it be most effective than permitted uses table as its own line? I mean, instead isn't, of isn't the intent that you want to control it in some way? You want to, is, is the intent that you want to change how this practice is done under the codified ordinance? Is that the intent? So it's still done the same way. So anytime we, have, we do have a massage therapist come through, I would talk to our development director, we'd pass them off and send them to the chief of police for them to get their license. That our practice hasn't changed on that since the codified ordinance has came out. It's just where should we specify in the development code so it is very clear to everyone and um, we want it to be as direct and clear as possible. We don't want any vagueness. We don't want anybody to try to argue this later on. It's, it's nice to have the development code read very clearly. We might want to have an individual section then. Yeah, that's where I have a little bit of pause. I mean, I can understand Paul's point too, but it sounds like there's some hesitancy on, from staff's position on where that should be placed. I wouldn't want to rush tonight to say, and then you come back later and say, hey, we got to change this again. This may not be appropriate. Yeah, the staff make a decision which way they want to go and bring it back and we'll vote. Yeah. Okay. And I don't, certainly don't see any particular issue with trying to meet the ordinance or make any changes there. I mean, I, I can understand that, but it, it my only reluctance. Like there's, there's no urgency because yeah. that's the regulation is already the regulation. We're not changing any regulation or adding another regulation. It's yep. just a matter of where you want to put it in the regulations. It, it's a presentation thing. Yeah. You want to put you want a separate line item or do you want to say, well, massage therapists are personal service businesses and leave it where it is. Yep. Or make a separate line item. That there's not a right answer. It's just like I, no, I want to highlight games, it. I, legal. I think legal would have to weigh in on exactly where yeah. it goes oh, because this is probably not being brought here for no reason at all. There's probably a very specific yeah. reason uh, why we're huh? being presented this right. for some sort of enforcement uh, activity that's happening. It's just it, it's in an ordinance and it's not in here. Right. I'm okay. So we're just we're just making it they want. I don't really care. Bringing everything so. into. <laughs> looks like the only thing they're really adding is you have to have a license from it's got to run through the chief the police, the chief of police which is there which is fair oh, well, it's not uh, it's, it's not on the it's other not there the not that's there what yet. they want to add that's what they're adding so is that you've got to get a license from the state and you've got to swing by the police chief but office. it's already an ordinance so right so i was going to ask james too um because i think this was something that came in front of city council and i don't know if this was when you were still here or not um but they put a moratorium on all city council a few years ago when we were having issues with 
people using massage parlors for things other than their for intended use it services, for personal ser for other personal services. Hmm. Um, so we put a moratorium on it, and then that came back to us, and we said, all right, well, we want to make a change that is going to be reflected in the codified ordinances that says that they have, to, you know, that we have some oversight via v, the police and a separate, um, you know, uh, inspection by the police and license from our city police. Um, and that's how that came to be. And I, I can't remember how long ago we actually voted on that, um, but that, that came to city council. I remember um, and that. Was and was approved through city council. Yeah. So, based, so based on what you just know. For some his just for some history, based on what I know. So based so, on what you know, do you have an opinion on where it goes? Do, it, when, you, um, when this goes to council and you have to say, hey, I was there and I, I heard about it. Yeah, does it really I mean, it, to you? it seems to me we could ask for the opinion of legal to see where they think it would be most clear to anyone who's applying. But what I read into this is that um, staff is trying to clean up all the places that massage parlors are mentioned in our, um, you know, in our use and regulations and, and, and all of that. And so I just read this as, hey, we'd like to put this in here in our uses and regulations. What do you guys think about doing that? And is this the appropriate place to do it? Um, I mean, I think you guys could say yes to this and yes to the table if those were both things that you thought were appropriate. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure that, yeah, I, I think legal would say, yeah, you're, you're covered to put that in there because it's already been approved by city council that this is a requirement. Okay, so you're just adding noticed. it, you're just adding it to the, to this list so that when James goes to do his job, he can say, all right, this is, it's not in here, but it is, you know, required and all, but it's not listed here. Instead, right. if it's just listed, okay. then it. You know, it simplifies. But, but going back to that notion of being listed, I, I, this is my only not to belabor the point here. Yeah. But w w is the from a staff's position, are you trying to change the district? I mean, a licensure requirement's one thing. So mm -hmm. that's 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 different than saying whether or not you're going to change the district. If you're not going to change the district, then you are just making additional language to provide additional uh, license and licensure requirements within that particular part of the code. So if you're going to build a massage therapist parlor in this O2 district that's listed here, these are the licensure requirements for that particular district. This is um, less about us requiring something new. This is just, as Mr. Ninny has mentioned, this is just keep changing our development code to reflect the change that happened with the codified ordinances. So this is just to update our book as well. Um, in the off chance, let's just say a massage therapist came in, they said, we reviewed your development code, it's not in here, now you're making me come back and get a licensure through your police department, and then that, and there's a fight or a, um, a legal battle that ensues. This would just have the development code now mirror something that is already law by our, our city. I think we'd all agree it's good to have in the development yeah. code, but it's, it's not our expertise on where to put it. It's you put it where yep. you all agree and are legal and then we, we'll go I see that. this that staff is requesting exactly where they want it to be and they're just asking for your approval and what James mentioned about the table and the types of uses that are that's a totally separate thing that I don't see that we're even talking about yeah it's, I think I think we just vote on this specific location but this wouldn't come to council because it it's already been and then if through, staff wants right? to no, change something else it's about it later well, this will they bring it back okay. a second time but this at least gives it a shot in the arm to to line it up so if there's any legal stuff going on we aren't the stop gap for i the say we vote on the request and if they want to change it later yeah. they, you can change Why make them go back to the drawing table and heck, and make do an exercise and have meetings and discuss where they want it and have it come back and be the same thing. Unless a, staff wants to include that table and only see city council one time. So it could be approved with modification requesting that you approve this text amendment, whether staff views it best here in 1204.09D16B or in the table, you would be able to um, approve with the modification saying either or or both depending on staff. 
Um, tonight, I mostly just wanted to <laughs> understand what your guys' opinions were. Would this, is, is this something that you would be in support of or not? This was a last minute change that um, we kind of talked about before I came here. I so think it just, makes total sense yeah. to put it in there. You know, let's, Agreed. let's let's approve it and move on. I'll make a motion to approve. A second. <laughs> Are you just approving it as as, as it is. is as is as presented? Okay. Awesome. Or, um, well, let's just let's just as is. If yeah. you want to change it later, let's just get this one. Or more. the table, wherever they want. Yeah. Just. Okay. John Langhorn. Yes. Todd Moore. Yes. Paul Nini. Yes. Jeremy Lakinas. Yes. Roger Daniel. Yes. Sam Cornwall. Yes. I would make a request, though, if there is our changes that you'd like to see made in that allowed use table, that we give Planning Commission an opportunity to look at that in much more depth, and maybe not just in that particular issue, but if there are other issues pertaining to that table that need to be updated or corrected or that we need to debate the merits of that maybe we can do all of that with that tape with regards to that table absolutely and Thank you. me personally anything that has the the codified ordinances for the police department or the police chief in it i personally would like to see legal write something about this is exactly what this should say or it should say something different or this is where it should go or shouldn't go does legal weigh in on stuff like that, I would assume? This is my first text amendment. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> just, don't, just don't pay outside legal some extra amount of money for it. Yeah. No, they're here. You know. I mean, they're, that's what they're there for. I, I would just want to make sure that what we're approving holds weight in court as it would be, as it is probably intended to do. And, and, and that's, Can, can they add a stipulation to the approval that you get maybe have legal take a look at it and make sure that that's approved to them we intend to anyway okay before it comes to council so we're good to okay. go then thank you okay brings us to older new business do we have any older new business we want to talk about tonight <laughs> anything new james i do have something new um previously i've had several people mention on a variety of boards and commissions about paper copies sometimes people don't want paper copies mailed to them they think it's a waste of paper I would like to get your guys' opinion. Um, overall, would you want a paper copy sent to you, or would you um, would you want everything to be electronic? Hmm. I have no personal preference. It's whatever you prefer. I can always have a paper copy here waiting for you. I always like paper copies because if it's digital, I'm going to print it on anyway because I can write notes on it. Okay. Sorry, I'm right there with. Mr. Langhorn and I usually print it off and bring it in, and I think I asked that question our last meeting. No, that was historic meeting. I think. Yeah, I like to print mine and write on it too. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'll go either way. You don't have to mail it to me though. Yeah, I'm happy. If you to, supply I'm them here, I'm, I'm here. fine with that. I don't have your new address anyways. <laughs> Which is why I have a copy of it sitting in front of me, right? <laughs> if there was a way you could print out an overview of the, you know, whatever the, previous minutes were that's important to maybe to print out to make notes on or maybe the agenda but all these color pictures and color layouts and all that that take a lot cost a lot of money to produce i just soon have a pdf file and look at it and i can see it on the screen here when we have the meeting yeah. um so we're saying you all know. the young guys want printed <laughs> and paul wants he wants paul a pdf wants a digital. Okay. Right. it's a digital world man <laughs> It's a digital world. I, I'm a product of. I mean, yeah, that me way too. Of I, 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 I can bring just, up everything on my cell phone. Yeah, it doesn't can, have to be the whole pack. I agree, but because uh, we're all looking up there or here. Or, maybe the maybe the agenda, the minutes, and you know, may, maybe just skip all the color the color pictures. <laughs> because that costs a lot of money to produce those color pictures. Or if there's someone who has plans or color renderings or something like that, that maybe we leave that out of the printed copies and just provide maybe one or two sets for the group here during the presentation. I don't know if that's something that would be a middle ground. Hair. I think we're probably yeah. splitting hairs. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, it's, Go either way. you know, I have so many things that I'm responsible for in printing myself. You know, we serve on the board. I get it. If the board wants to have PDF, I'm not opposed to having PDF or whatever form. 
but it does, in addition to everything else I'm responsible for, that becomes one more burden that I'm responsible for in doing the work. It's yep. nice for me to have this packet. I do the homework. I come get the meeting done. I'm old school when it comes to that, but I get it. I mean, if the board goes another way, I'm, I'm open to that, but if we don't all have a lot of paperwork. <laughs> so James, with clerk of council, Amy just always tells us and new onboarding members, hey, listen, if you want the printed copy, I'll print it for you. If you don't, just let me know, so. Yeah. Printed. Yeah. yeah. When you send an email out and then announcing the meeting, maybe put a little byline. Re please respond that you need a printed copy or not. You know, that way yeah. individually we can say, no, I'm good with the PDF or no, I need a printed copy. Then you can do it. Me because if you're not going to even go to the meeting, why do you need anything? Right. Right. So you're just wasting a, a big stack of paper and color printers and everything else. I say just make it part of the email blast to ask you if you're coming to the meeting. The PDF is part of the, of the meeting. So we get it, we all get a digital copy. Yeah. I print it off. I, for a while I, I was printing them off. I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you don't. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you want a printed copy, let him know and he'll send you a printed copy. He doesn't have to send me one, I'll print out what I need. That's all. So, so far right. we have three printed, one digital. I'm not taking anything away from anybody else. No, not at all. I think we just need you guys to can have your print. So he, exits, well, you're less confused. I, I think <laughs> that um, I'm going to follow Mr. Nene's advice about putting it at the bottom. Um, but that way I, I'll send it to you guys 10 days in advance. If you want to um, want a paper copy and you send me back it, that you do want a paper copy, then I'll mail it to you then. I will never um, remember with, that. With your, well, print and I'll it. just send it to you guys anyways. Yeah, I just want to. That's it. probably the safer way. Yeah. Did you say you don't have addresses for a lot of these guys? No, just, just oh, one who just, just moved. Oh, okay, all right. Recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. okay. Brings us to adjournment. All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like I like to write on them. <laughs>